So, Colin, when you were approached by, was it TV, a TV production company to, to yes, turn it, your memoirs into this sort of mini-series, what was your initial reaction? Initial reaction was complete shock, really. I mean, I was in a position, I, I hadn't even written the book. I'd written about a quarter or less than a quarter of the book. Uh, but I got involved with helping on another drama production and the guy who was writing that had read what I'd written and thought it would make... Um, a, a good drama and, and he really did the pitching for me and I just out of the blue got a phone call saying uh, come and meet this uh, Philippa Braithwaite who's who's runs Buffalo Pictures and um, she wants to talk about your book that you haven't written. <laughs> so then you quickly finished it I presume. You did eventually yes <laughs> yes yes. yes yeah. And then you found out that Martin Clunes was going to yeah. be playing you. Yeah. It's kind of surreal isn't it? Yeah absolutely I mean it's, I have somebody of his standing and his yeah. reputation and somebody who I personally you know huge amount of respect for um, playing playing it and, and, and also that and I think we see and we've seen in the in the in the production that he he plays it with a lovely sort of attitude he, he's, he's not over the top with anything mm. there's a little bit of humor here and there and, and it's really yeah it, it makes it come alive in a way that I, I, I didn't dream was possible really he, he's he's a really talented guy Sir. Yeah, I'm DCI Colin Sutton, I'm the SIO. We need to take the pavement on all sides of the green. And uh, can you put these somewhere safe on the other side of the street and make sure that that's as close as our friends from the press get? Thank you. How close is it to what actually happened all those years ago? Um, it's very, very close. I mean, that was one of my kind of stipulations, mm. was that if we're going to do this, we're going to do it authentically. We're going to make it right. Um, there are certain limitations that you can't have everybody involved, because if you have a drama with 70 characters, then the audience is sort of saying, well, who, who's she? What does he do? You know, this sort of thing. So we formed some kind of composite characters that yeah. didn't exist. But all the... Uh, things that happen in terms of the policing, in terms of the policing operation, are true and actually happened. Some of them have changed the order around a bit to make it fit, but uh, it's it's very, very true to life as to, to what went on. When you when you see it on the television, do you, is it sort of surreal that that there's there's uh, Martin Cleans who mm. is you? Or I mean, how did how did you yeah, feel watching it? At first, it was a bit strange. Yeah. The first time I saw the, the sort of first edits, and, and you sort of think, wow, you know, this, this really. And then I suppose you get into it as any person watching something would be, and mm. even though I knew the story and knew what was coming next, yeah. uh, and. What really brought it home for me, um, I think we'll see in episode two, th th there's a scene in there where I had to go to France to see uh, Amélie Delagrange's family. Mm. And it was the most um, emotional, moving thing I've ever had to do in, 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 in the police or otherwise. And the way that it was portrayed, the way that it was directed and the way that Martin acted it, it brought back all those memories to me. I'm sitting there, and I, you know, I was I was back in that house in really? France. It, it was it was that good. So, mm. you know, I, it exceeded all my expectations really in terms of of being a, an accurate representation of what we did. Were you involved behind the scenes in the in the producing? Things? Yeah, they, they they were. I mean, Buffalo were fantastic with that. Um, you know, we 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 uh, I was involved with Ed Whitmore in writing the script and Ed came and stayed up up in Suffolk with me for, for a week to write the first episode and then um, we did the rest of it by email uh, and but also once f uh, the shooting started um, you know I, I had a big uh, part to play in, in, in advising on, on, on what things look like on the, the set and, and the, um, uh, the what vehicles we had um, mm. you know whether the the language, you know, there, there are some there are some things that when police work is dramatised that really jar with police officers, and, and so we've tried to avoid that and tried to get it as realistic yeah. as possible. And and um, there's a lovely sort of story about about paper cups. They hate paper cups being around in uh, in, in the set because they, they they're bright and they they sort of litter it up. But murder squad offices are full of paper cups. Oh, yeah. And uh, and so I persuaded them. They said, yeah, OK, we can have paper cups and, and <laughs> in, a, in a photocopier box lid as a tray. You know, that's that's what it was like. So it's kind All of... All in the detail. Yeah, it's yeah. touches like that, I think, that, you know, certainly those who know, but hopefully those who don't know will, will realise that... Uh, appreciate. Uh, ...is, is, is, is yeah. really accurate, yeah. Well, he was peeking around the sides. Right. And you had a bad feeling about him? Yeah. Yeah, I did. 
What, you think I'm making it up? No. When people have a bad feeling about someone, there's usually a reason. Not always, but often. He was smoking. Can't be sure, but looked like roll-ups. Well, like I said, we'll need you to come in and make a statement, OK? All right. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What is it about certain cases, and uh, I, I think all those years ago it was, it was the murder of Millie Dowler, that mm. people are still so fascinated about now? I think, I mean, the fascination with, with major crime and, and the fascination with murder and, and the things that people do that are just outside of our normal comprehension mm. will we'll never cease. You know, it, it's been, you, you only have to look at uh, drama on TV, fiction, books. Um, you know, the murder genre is, is big in all of them. Uh, fortunately, people like uh, Belfield come along quite infrequently, mm. so I suppose when they do, they're bound to create a, a lot of interest. And you came onto that case quite late, but mm. you were instrumental in, uh, in putting him behind bars for, for that murder. Mm. Um, what, what was it like working on that case compared to, to other cases that you'd worked on? The big difference was that the normal normal murders, if you like, the, the, the run-of-the-mill murders that you get are generally one-offs. They're generally somebody that there's been a dispute, there's been an argument, it wasn't planned. Yeah. Um, and you want to solve that for the benefit of the family, the, the victim's family, so that they see justice and, and you want justice to be done on that individual. But there's not normally this additional dimension that he might actually strike again and again and again. And there's a kind of a pressure with that that comes. You know, it's literally, you see it in fiction all the time. Mm. How long have we got till he does another one? Well, we had that for real. That was really going on. That was in the back of all of, of our minds. Um, but what that does also do is when you succeed, as we did, then you think that you've really achieved something worthwhile because mm. not only have you got justice for those who have been attacked, but you've protected all those that would have been yeah. attacked in the future. Yeah. When you watch crime dramas like mm. CSI, well, you probably don't, but... I do, no, I <laughs> do, do. I do. Yes, do, yes, I do, yes, I do. But you find they often heavily rely on forensic mm. evidence, but is that the case? I mean, a lot of people have praised you and your team at that time for, for going sort of back to basics. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not a choice you'd make if you had the choice. Right. You'd have forensic evidence because it's... it's, it's it, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it makes it a lot more straight, straightforward to, to convict. Um, the problem we have, actually, is that... that juries are now expecting it because they watch CSI they watch all this stuff they think well you know that you know you just touch something and you leave your DNA there and so if you take a case to court and you haven't got that you know that jurors are going to be saying well, well he couldn't have done it there's no DNA there so you have to kind of deal with that um, secretly am I glad now with hindsight that we didn't get DNA yes I am because I think it you know it, it was a real achievement for my team to do what they did mm. in the absence of that of that sort of um, shortcut, if you like. Yeah. When, um, when Millie was murdered, I was mm. working in London as a journalist at the time, and I worked um, with the family a little bit, got to know them, and um, Millie's sister Gemma wrote mm. a book, which yes. you are in, yeah. uh, and, and she praises you. But a, a lot of the sort of complaints with the family at that time were the initial police investigation, but also the way they were treated when, mm. when Belfield was brought to trial. Uh, what do you think of our justice system? I, I have quite a lot to say about this in my book, I suppose. But uh, essentially, I mean, lawyers have got a duty to represent their client and whatever their client tells them. And sometimes that is going to mean that they give innocent people who are victims themselves a really hard time. Yeah. And, and that's unfortunate. I think, uh, you know, I've read Gemma's book. I think it was a very courageous mm. book and, 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 uh, and it was a real insight to, to how the family felt at that side of things. Uh, <sighs> Belfield himself managed not to come into court to face sentencing after he was convicted, and that's been repeated, the, the Babes in the Wood murder just recently, the same thing happened. Um, I think that's wrong. I think that, you know, it, it's difficult to, to drag somebody kicking and screaming into court to be sentenced, but I think that the, you know, part of the processes for justice seem to be done, and, and there were, um, you know, in our trial, we had not only victims' families that were charged, but people who had been attacked by Belfield and we didn't have the evidence. They still came along to court. They wanted to see him meet his justice and, and, uh, and they were sort of denied that in a way. So I think that's, that's something that 
is slanted too far in, in favour of the, of the defendant and, and, and of the process and doesn't think about victims too much. Mm. Um, but we have a system of adversarial justice and, and you know you have to have the right to question your accusers I guess and, and that's always going to be difficult for people. Yeah. You're retired now. Yes. Is there anything that would bring you out of retirement? Oh, I doubt it now. <laughs> no. I, I think um, I, think I um, it's eight years now and I, I, I think it's, it's too long. Um, mm. I keep in touch with, with, the, uh, with the police in many ways. My son's a policeman in London, so um, you know, I have contact uh, with him through that. But uh, no, I think there's too much water gone under the bridge now and things have changed. Not for the better in all cases, but I think it would be... Uh, I don't think new tricks really exist. Right. <laughs> You're living a sleepier life in Suffolk. Um, I wouldn't say it's sleepier. I, a very pleasant life in Suffolk yeah. and, and uh, it, it's a great part of the country that, yeah. um, that I came to almost by accident. But uh, I'm now firmly here, my parents are here as well and, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely time. But uh, um, I, I still, you know, I still get to London quite often and see my old colleagues and so forth. Well, so well deserved retirement. Uh, thank you ever so much for coming in to talk to us today. No